So continuing chapter 16, I'm going to work a couple problems with you, um, starting with a weak base example and then what we call a neutralization reaction with some pH calculations. So find the pH of a 0.2 molar aqueous ammonia solution if its Kb value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So again, weak acids and weak bases are going to look the same in terms of how you do the um, problem. The only difference is Kb, you're looking at OH concentration, not A. So um, you really don't need to do an ice table after this example. I just like to show you that it's going to be exactly the same if it's an acid or a base. Um, and you're always going to end up with the initial concentration minus X, and you're going to have X and X for your two other ions, and everything's going to be one to one. So you do want to write a Kb expression with the ammonium and the hydroxide ion on the top and ammonia on the bottom. So the top is always going to be X squared. And the bottom is always going to be the initial concentration minus X. And this is going to equal your KB value. Now, again, it's a weird phenomenon, but this is exactly the same number as the Ka for acetic acid. It's a weird thing that always bothers me. Uh, but this KB value, whatever the base is going to be, is always going to be given to you. So like the weak acids, we're going to cross out that X. And we're going to confirm this with a percent ionization to make sure that that's OK. So x comes out to be 1.9 times 10 to the negative third. So this, uh, I want to pause for a minute. What is that the concentration of? OK, so it's x, so it's the concentration of the hydroxide. If I take the negative log of that number, OK, I'm going to get 2.72, OK? So in your head, you should know that this can't be the pH because this is a base and the pH of a base must be greater than seven. So when I calculate this, this must be my pOH of 2.72. So I have to subtract that from 14 to get my pH, which is 11.28. Again, two digits after the decimal for sig figs, but just be aware when you are doing weak bases, you're finding the concentration of the hydroxide. So when you take the negative log of that, your brain needs to go, wait, 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 this is my POH, not my pH. Now, in terms of your percent ionization, let's see if I can cancel it out. So I'm going to take my X, which is 1.9 times 10 to the negative third. That goes on top. My initial concentration goes on the bottom, 0.2, and multiply that by 100. Okay? So that comes out to be about 0.95%. Um, and so that's less than 1%. So it is okay for me to cross out that X. Again, 10 to the negative fifth is kind of the, if you get to 10 to the negative fourth, you kind of have to worry about it. Um, and your concentration there is relatively low, but still somewhat significant. All right, so the next two problems on the video um, are uh, kind of an introduction into what we're going to spend a lot more time on in chapter 17. But I like to introduce it um, to kind of give you some idea of ions floating around in there and pHs of that. What are the concentration of the ions in solution formed by the mixing of 50 mils of a 1 molar hydrochloric acid and 30 mils of a 0.4 molar barium hydroxide? So this is what we call a neutralization reaction because what I have is a combination of an acid, HCl, a strong acid by the way, and barium hydroxide, a strong base. So for these types of problems, you need to write it a balanced chemical equation because you're going to need it for the stoichiometry. So because I have two OHs, I'm going to need two HCLs in order to completely neutralize to make two water molecules. And again, the focus of neutralization is the fact that I'm taking an H plus and an OH minus and neutralizing it to make water, okay? So this is what we call the net ionic equation for strong acids and strong base reactions, okay? But we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Instead, I wanna figure out, well, what kind of ions, what do I have in there? What has reacted to form water? And what other ions do we have floating in there? Like the barium and the chloride. So I'm going to do some math underneath the hydrochloric acid and the barium hydroxide. So I have 0 0.05 liters of my hydrochloric acid, and it's a one molar concentration. So I have 0 0.05 moles of H plus from my hydrochloric acid. My barium hydroxide, okay, 
I have 30 mils of a 0.4, so I'm gonna take um, 0 0.03 liters times my 0.4 molar, and that's gonna give me 0 0.012 moles from that calculation. But do note that I wanna know how much hydroxide is in there. Well, because I have a two on the outside, and if I looked at that beaker, I would have twice the amount of hydroxide as I do the barium, I essentially have to multiply that number by two to find my OH. So it's gonna come out to be 0 0.024 moles of my OH. Okay, so recognize with the OHs, if there's two of them, you have twice the concentration of that. So if this is how many moles of H plus and how many moles of OH minus, I have, of course, more H plus than OH. So I'm going to subtract the 0 0.024 moles of OH because that's going to be what reacts with the H plus. And this is going to go down by that exact amount, so I'm going to have zero moles of OH minus in my final reaction. So this comes out to be 0 0.026 moles of H plus that I still have in that beaker. So what does that mean for concentration? So my H plus, if I have 0 0.026 moles of it, what is going to be my new volume? Okay, so I have 50 mils plus 30 mils. So once this is mixed together, my new volume is 0 0.08 liters. So with these kinds of calculations, you have to consider the total volume um, when you get that mixture. So I get 0.33 molarity for my H plus. And if I wanted to find the pH, I could just take the pH of that. Well, what I can assume that the OH is zero moles, and I'll discuss that a little bit. But what about my barium ions? Okay, the barium ions and the chloride ions are spectators. Okay, they make barium chloride, but really that's what's floating around in there. Well, the barium comes from the barium hydroxide. So go back to the 0 0.03 liters times the 0.4. This is how much barium I have, a 0 0.012 moles. So 0 0.012 moles of barium. Now my new volume again is 0 0.08. I get 0.15 molarity of my barium ion in that final solution. And then Cl, all right, so this is where sometimes it gets confusing. In the equation, okay, HCl, it is 0 0.05 liters times one molar, okay? The two is not on the outside here for the equation. So essentially the moles of H plus are the moles of the chloride, 0 0.05 moles. And my total volume again is the same as the other problems. So you end up with 0.63 molar as my concentration of the chloride. Again, you don't multiply it by two because this is how much you have in there. All right, so back to this idea of zero moles of hydroxide. Well, to be honest, that's pretty close to what you have, but realize that you do have water that naturally produces the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. So you might wanna just leave this as approximately zero, because if I do have a concentration of H plus, I could have a little bit of OH in there. Um, but again, um, that's not a, a big focus for our discussion. But this is kind of how you do ions in solution if you're mixing a strong acid and a strong base. So next problem, okay, is somewhat similar. Okay, find the pH, except I'm not asking for ions, I'm asking for pH. Find the pH of 50 mils of a one molar nitric acid is mixed with 25 mils of a one molar calcium hydroxide. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back and show you. So I like this one because it turns out that it comes out to be a pH of seven. Um, you have the nitric acid HNO3 and then the calcium hydroxide. Uh, you need twice the amount of nitric acid because you have two OHs in this equation. So when you multiply the liters times the molarity and you realize that the OH, you have twice the amount of OH in there like we did in the previous problem, you have exactly the same amount of moles of H plus as you do OH. So essentially, 
You have no additional H plus from the nitric acid or the OH from the calcium hydroxide. So really the only thing that's driving the pH is the fact that naturally the water molecules are gonna make hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. And they're gonna make them in equal quantities if nothing else is um, dominating it. So it's 10 to the negative seven, so that's where you get your pH of seven. And you should have two digits after the decimal because I have two sig figs given in the 